My name is Lieutenant Junior Grade Mike Blankenship. I'm the Blue Angels Public Affairs Officer um, in my second year with the team. Welcome, Mike. How will someone become a Public Affairs Officer for the Blue Angels? That's an interesting question. Uh, to become the Public Affairs Officer for the Blue Angels, you have to have some experience in Navy Public Affairs, a background in uh, media relations, communications. And uh, for me, myself personally, uh, I spent five years as an enlisted photojournalist prior to getting my commission as a public affairs officer. I did a tour in the Navy's National Public Affairs Office in Washington, D.C. and uh, kind of learned the ropes working with the national and international media. And uh, just like anyone else who applies for the Blue Angels, I had to go through the same process. Uh, pretty intense interview, uh, an application process where the team uh, to know me, my personality, and it's pretty much the same process for, for anyone else applying for another position on the team. Had you heard of the Blue Angels before joining the Navy? Have you seen any of their shows? I've been aware of the Blue Angels pretty much my entire life. I grew up in the military. My father was in the Army. My grandfather was in the Army. Uh, we used to go to military open houses and see the air shows, and I've seen the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds fly. Uh, pretty much my entire life. It's, it's always been a big part of my life. And when I was you know, three or four years old, I used to always say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly airplanes, I'm gonna be a Blue Angel pilot. And, uh, that, was, that just looks like a lot of fun. I'd go to the air shows and just, and just dream, just like any other kid uh, that I meet today. Uh, unfortunately, my eyesight doesn't allow me to, to fly military aircraft, so I pursued, uh, obviously, another career path. And uh, had the opportunity to, to be a Blue Angel just as a public affairs officer rather than a pilot. Mike. Do the pilots have a three-year rotation? No, the pilots have two-year rotations. Uh, public affairs officers and the C-130 pilots have three-year rotation. Do they have to agree to stay in for so many years after they return back to the fleet? What do you owe? A public affairs officer does not owe any commitment to the Navy after the Blue Angels tour is complete. What is your typical week like when you come into town to set up? How do you get hyped up for the show? Uh, well, our, our week actually starts Tuesday in, in Pensacola. A typical weekly cycle for, for the Blue Angels Public Affairs Officer, for example, starts on Tuesday in Pensacola. Uh, it's our, our, we're practicing, we're getting ready for the next show, uh, which could be you know, any number of locations across the country. Um, as the Public Affairs Officer, I'm making my calls to, to that show site publicity coordinator. Uh, making sure that everything is starting to come together for our Thursday afternoon media availability that we do at every show site after our practice. And that's something that I'll help coordinate and put together every Tuesday and Wednesday when we're back home in Pensacola. Thursday, when we arrive at the show site, you, you get off Fat Albert and you hit the ground running. Um, there's media there usually to, to film you getting off the airplane and, and recording little, every little move you make, recording the practices. And uh, I'm, I'm already beginning to do interviews and, and coordinate the availability with the pilots upon completion of our practice. Friday mornings, I'm up at the crack of dawn, uh, usually doing the live weather remotes with the, uh, the weather guys down at the airship site. And, and uh, from there, I'm making radio phoner interviews with uh, show sites two, three, four weeks down the road, just starting to build that publicity. Uh, Friday afternoons, we're doing uh, the air show practice uh, for, for the next weekend, or for the, the upcoming weekend. Uh, there's time that I spend with uh, the Make-A-Wish children um, and other interviews that, that go on that afternoon as well. Uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings, I put on my collateral duty hat. Uh, one of my duties is to work in the air traffic control tower, uh, coordinating airspace uh, for the Blue Angels and uh, just kind of working hand in hand with the, the controllers, making sure everything goes smooth for our jet demonstration. So you're away from home a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. What makes it all worthwhile? I tell you, what, what makes being on the Blue Angels worthwhile and worth the 300 days annually that we're on the road is, is seeing the sparkle and the smile in the faces of children. And, and knowing that what you're doing could possibly inspire them to pursue a similar career or, or maybe one day join the military. Our, our mission is to travel the country and to enhance Navy Marine Corps recruiting. And if at one show site you get just one kid to, to possibly consider a career in the military and even join, 
and you've done your job. And when people walk away from the Blue Angel Show, what do you feel you've accomplished? I think probably the biggest thing that we hope to accomplish and, and leave people uh, uh, with when they walk away from the Blue Angel Air Show is that they can be proud of the Navy Marine Corps team and, and the, the people that we are representing who are forward deployed 365 days a year defending the freedom and, and the people's ability, the, the American public's ability to go see air shows. Can you comment a little more on the Michael Wish Foundation? What is your involvement? And how did it all get started? Every Friday at each show site, uh, we work with the air show coordinators to allow special needs visitors or special needs fans, uh, handicapped, uh, people, you know, the elderly, people who would have a hard time um, navigating a large crowd. So it gives them an opportunity to, to see the Blue Angels Air Show uh, in, in uh, kind of a less crowded environment. Now, one of the things that we do, we work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and invite them out to the show as our special guests each Friday. And after our demonstration, we bring the kids out and spend some time with the team out in front of the jets, signing autographs. Uh, we do a photo opportunity with them and just really make them feel, hopefully, for at least a few short minutes, forget about some of the problems that they're having to deal with. And uh, it's really something special to see their reactions and their eyes light up when they see the Blue Angel. Thanks, Lieutenant Junior Grade Blankenship. It has been a pleasure.